Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another amazing Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Show and Shine video with your host Trevor Celescu, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Actually, we're now online. <laughs> anyway, we've been online for a long time. So without further ado, today we are going to look at one of my model car builds. This is the 1930 Packard Speedster Phaeton. Now, this model I built a long time ago, very long time ago. It was one of my first big old 30s cars. So we'll take a look at it. It's not quite the best up to snuff, but I do have another one of these. And I've also got one of the Hera Auto Museum ones, which is one my dad built, but my sister ended up getting an inheritance. So anyway, we're going to take a look at this one. And in the future, I will build the other Packards and we'll take a look at those I'm not sure when, so don't hold your breath. But at any rate, let's go down to the bench and check out my build of the 1930 Packard Phaeton. Here we have my 1930 Packard Speedster Phaeton, and this model kit I built when I was quite young. So again, it's still the same monogram kind of kit as a boat-tailed Speedster, only it has the different body and back seats. We, again, we have our side-mounted tires, our nice chrome-plated wire wheels, with the white tire insert. That was a monogram thing. It looks really good and keeps it all clean. Then we've got the luggage rack, which I left straight up and down. It should actually be lowered into the back here. We've got our nice top. I also did paint a pinstripe along here in my limited ways back when I was eight. I got a little bit of red paint just underneath that wheel for some reason. Again, you get the nice little chrome vents in here. Now, this is what the Packard radiator looks like without the stone shield. I didn't want to put it in because my dad had a few Packards and all of them had the stone shield. So you never got to see the actual Packard grill. So I left mine off. As you'll notice, this cross beam is actually at an angle. I know it drives me crazy, too. <laughs> Keep thinking, huh, what's wrong with the front end? It's just that little bit. Anyway, uh, again, I got a fingerprint up here. I mean, I built this when I was eight. So again, the features are the removable hood and the removable top. And I basically painted this the same way as my dad painted his. We also have another little convertible downed boot on here, which drops nicely like that, just to give this car more of that open road feel. It was a touring, so it was designed to tour, a touring, a touring, to tour across the United States, maybe Canada, wherever you were from. And so being on the open road and having the top down allowed all the passengers to see without interruption exactly what was going on outside. So let's just take this off so it doesn't go flying when I grab the model like this and show you my take on the engine. Again, I used Tester's Green, much like my dad did, painted up the intake and exhaust. Now I don't see the uh, carburetor on here. So I don't know what happened to that. Maybe I never put it on. Maybe it got lost. But like I said, I am going to be making some more of these Packards. This one will be basically just a filler video so you can see what was going on when I was about 11. There's that motor. you got the horn mounted down here and the drive shaft coming off the steering wheel. Or the steering column, I mean. That's what it should be saying. There you go again. And a couple of the filters and whatnot up top. Serial number or spark advance up in here tells you where the spark plugs are supposed to go is what I'm trying to say And then we've got our interior again painted with the testers brown, but I only used one coat That's why it looks kind of streaky and funny in here And then we've got our interior Can You see that there with all the gauges down in there and the pedals on the floor and our standard transmission coming up here with the gear shift. Now one thing I didn't do was clean up any of the little cutoff points from the parts tree. So that was kind of a shame. And again, like I was saying, if the camera can focus on this, so right in here is a nice thumbprint from the flat black paint I was trying to paint in here in the back. So again, I mean, it's not the cleanest Packard in the world, but you know, at my age for the effort I and my uh, experience level with model kits this is where i got to so like i say i'm planning on some future ones which will be a lot nicer now let's just turn this upside down a little bit now one thing i did do which was a bit different from my dad is i painted in the fenders black now this would have all been this red color 
but I wanted a little difference. Again, I painted the uh, front springs with the tan to show that cover in there, and then the back were metal. And then I've got my differential going in here and the Packard block. This time I only painted the oil pan, and then the back on the transmission is the engine color, I guess. There's all the steering rods and the front axle. And again, I mean, it's not bad for when I was young. And overall, this is still a very nice looking Packard. Even if some of the building is not quite up to my standards of today, it's still something I can be proud of and look at fondly in my recollections. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the 1930 Packard Phaeton that I built probably when I was about 10 or 11 years old. It was quite a fun model back in the day, and it was quite nice to clean it up. Oh, do you want to know how I clean these models and get rid of all the dust? Well, I use two paint brushes, big one and a narrow one. This one is like a blade, so I can get down in between the fenders. And then after that, I use a little bit of the cleaner for my glasses, and I spritz it onto one of those microfiber rags and then I carefully go over everywhere that I can. Sometimes I use a Q-tip and then they come out looking like this with a nice sheen to them, no fingerprints and all the rest. Now what I want to do with these models in the future is I want to build a nice museum that complements both my building and my dad's in these really cool like settings. So something in the 30s would be like maybe an Al Capone scene or with my dad's fire trucks, I want to build a burning building using those ICM figures as well that are the firemen from 1910. I think mixing all that together would be really nice in a big, huge, like New York City scene. And that's the only thing I could put in a museum. Now, I haven't started with the museum. This is all just a concept in my mind. But if you want to help support that for as little as $3 a month, click that join button and you can directly help us. And by doing so, you also get your name in the credits at the end of this video. It's just my small token of appreciation to display who's helping me. You know what I mean? So if you want to get some really cool model kits as well, don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I've got quite a few and I'm always trying to get a few more in and we can ship those out to anywhere in the world, including our cousins to the south, our wonderful neighbors in the United States, because I'm up in Canada, eh? So anyway, I hope that sounds good to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Click the notification bell so every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. Also, click the thumbs up button, because by doing so, you help the Google algorithm to say, hey, this video is worth watching. The algorithm. Yeah, I got rid of them algorithm who could ask for anything more and on that sour note we'll say thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time